Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for the life of uh, all the moms. Amen. Both the natural mom and to the spiritual moms. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. And thank you so much, Father God. I know and I do believe. Let's uh, desire by faith that the Lord is uh, raising the church up. A youth pastor. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. If you really want that, desire and pray for it. Amen, church. Hallelujah. Wow. Uh, have you made that poem, Carl? Or yeah, yeah, you made that poem. Wow. Whew. It probably will take me nine months to produce such. Considering that it's probably not gonna be as gonna be as good in a sound as. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the life of all the moms. Hallelujah. Okay, let us uh, let us pray. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you very much, Father God, for the gift of motherhood. Thank you so much that it is very unique because it is only, Father God, within the British colony that we are celebrating this Mothering Sunday this Sunday. And uh, we are truly honored and privileged, Father, to, to commemorate, to honor the lives of these wonderful moms, O oh God. Both the natural and like what we say, the spiritual moms, oh God. We thank you so much for their life. We thank you so much for that gift. We thank you so much for placing them in that position, not only to their family, not only to their home and household, but most importantly, to your church, oh God. We thank you that you are using these moms, these mothers, Father God, for your will and purposes. And most importantly, Father, even as we go through that season of revival in this church, in this family, in this body that you have gathered us all through. Thank you so much, Father God. Lord, as we study your words, we thank you for the life of Esther. We thank you so much, O Lord God, that from this humble beginning, from this humble young Jewish woman, Father God, that you are going to to bless us all today. Not just the mothers, not just the women's of the church, oh God. Not just the women's tuning in online with us, but most importantly, your body, Father God. Because your word says that the church is the bride of Christ. And we thank you so much. Lord, take away whatever wits and work and wiles in the schemes of the enemy that will try to hinder us in fully receiving the word that comes from you, Father God. Lord, we pray that you open our spiritual senses, that you open our spiritual mind, you open our heart, that we may fully grasp and receive your message, and most importantly, your personal revelation and your corporate revelation, Father God, for us. Lord, as for your servant, I continue to humble myself down, I continue, Father God, to, to ask for the blood covering that comes from you. Hide me behind you, Father, so that, Lord, it won't just be mere me that these people, my dear brothers and sisters, won't just be mere staring at and hearing. But, Father God, may you who sent me, O Lord. Lord, these are your words. Empower it. Gave the breath of life upon it. And thank you so much in advance. Because we will learn, we will grow, and through your word, Father God, we will be revived. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. And thank you so much for the life of um, our children, the children, the youth, the children of the ministry. Thank you so much for being the Lord instrument for us this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, my dear brothers and sisters, how many of us have read the story or the book of Esther? Ba? We we exhorted each and every one po to read the book of Esther so that uh, we can fully grasp and we can fully understand what we are talking here today. It comprises of uh, 
10 chapters and this chapter as well is in average quite shorter than your uh, average chapter. Amen? If you haven't read the book of Esther yet, there is time. When you go home later, basahin po natin. Because it truly is very inspiring. It truly is very inspiring word. Uh, very inspiring book. Amen, church? So, are we ready? Especially the women's and the mothers of the church. Are we ready? As we are going to talk about the life in the book of Esther. Amen. How this woman, how this young Jewish woman was used by the Lord's instrument in the provision of His providence sa mga plano ng Panginoon during that time. Amen, church? So just really challenge us the thought that Lord, as a woman in the ministry, Father, as a mother, not just to my child, not just to my children, but as a, a mother in the church, women's, you call yourself. The Father God, ano kaya yung calling mo? What is your calling for me? Father God, what are you calling me to do? Why did you usher me to this ministry? Why did you usher me to this church? Amen? Amen, church? Mothers, women's? If we look at the story of uh, Esther, the setting of the story is some 100 years after the Babylonian exile of the Jewish nation. Remember, King Nebuchadnezzar ransacked Jerusalem, ransacked the nation of Israel, and he scattered them. He took people out of Jerusalem, he took people out of Israel, and they took them in captivity. Remember Daniel, the book of Daniel? There we remember that Daniel, together with his friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and all other, um, uh, and all other toys, people, young men, intelligent, strong men of the Jew, they were taken away to Babylon. Amen. We remember that story. And it so happened, my dear brothers and sisters, that some few years later, Babylon was also defeated by even a stronger kingdom. We were studying the prophecies, the four beasts in the Daniel's kingdom, the dream of Daniel, that after Babylon and King Nebuchadnezzar, who defeated them, the Medo-Persian Empire. Amen, church. King Darius or King Cyrus the Great. No? It is the same person. And my dear brothers and sisters, after that, the, the son of King Darius, the son of King uh, Cyrus the Great, his name is Xerxes the First. He is now he has now took over the reign. He is now took over the throne, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen. This happens in the capital city of Persia during that time. In the book of Esther, if you read it, it says the city of Susa. Where is the city of Susa now? If you look at it, it is now in the current day Iran. Amen. So that was the, the capital of the Medo-Persian Empire. So as we have said, my dear brothers and sisters, the main character of the book, first, we have the king or King Xerxes the first. My dear brothers and sisters, amen. This is the same king that made famous the 300 Spartans. Have you saw the movie 300 or the 300 Spartans? It is the same king that those Spartans were fighting. To be honest, it was very bad taste because the King Xerxes that was depicted in there, it was nowhere near a King Xerxes. Naalala niyo yung movie? That movie in that King Xerxes is parang he was depicted as parang homosexual, parang bading-bading. But if you look at history, no, he's not. No? Naalala niyo yung kalbo na may, na may ano, no? That's not, that's not how he's depicted. That's a very bad taste, really. Amen? But it is the King Xerxes uh, that the uh, 300 Spartans have fought during that time. 
We have Queen Vashti, the queen that was removed because of her disobedience to the king. We, can, we have Esther, the young Jewish woman that became the queen after ki, uh, Queen Vashti was removed out of the throne. We have Mordecai, Esther's uncle, who's always there uh, uh, advising Esther, Esther's greatest confidant. Amen? And we have Haman, the king's advisor, who planned to kill Mordecai and who planned to eliminate all the Jews. Amen, church? So here the story unfold that if you read that, no? Sabi niya rito, chapter 1, this is what happened during the time of Xerxes. The Xerxes who ruled over 127 provinces stretching from India to Kush. At that time, King Xerxes reigned from his royal throne in the citadel of Susa. And in the third year of his reign, he gave a banquet for all his nobles and officials. The military leaders of Persia and Media, the princes and the nobles of the provinces were present. For a full 160 days, wow, party of six months. Can I invite you to my party? Make sure you will be available for the next six months. So they partied for 180 days. But at the end of that 180 days, meron pa siyang extended party. There is more extended party for more closer people for the next seven days. So dito mga kapatid, no? Makikita natin, here we can see that King Xerxes have hosted an elaborate banquet feast that lasted 487 days. For the purpose of, the Bible says, showing off. For the purpose of displaying his wealth. For the purpose of displaying his greatness and splendor. In our native language, sabi natin, pagpapasikat. Diba? Pagpapasikat. On the last day of the banquet feast, he demanded that his wife, Queen Vashti, appear at the garden party wearing her royal crown to show off her beauty. Because the Bible says, for she was lovely to look at. Wow. The Bible says that Vashti is very pretty, lovely to look at. And as we can see, a boastful king Pinasikat niya na lahat ng kayamanan niya. Pinasikat niya na lahat-lahat ng ari-arian niya. And at the last day, bago matapos yung kanyang party, he said, call the wife, call the queen. Because ask her to wear her crown because I want to parade her. Gusto ko rin siyang ipasikat sa aking mga kaibigan. But the Bible says that Queen Vashti refused to come. Queen Vashti refused to come. Why is that? Why did Queen Vashti did not come? For Queen Vashti herself is hosting her separate party. Meron din siyang sariling party. Amen. It doesn't look natural that your husband is hosting a different party and the wife is hosting a different party. A couple that should be united, they are in a separate parties. Mukhang hindi yata natural. Amen, church. No? That is the very reason why that this angered the king. This angered Xerxes, mga kapatid. And with the advice of the wise man, with the advice of his advisors, these people are expert in the law of Persia. What did they say? You know, my king, kung palalampasin mo yan, our king, if you are gonna let that go, what did they say? His re her refusal will be heard all over the land. Magiging balita yung kanyang refusal. And it will cause wives, women, to disobey their husband. So ano yung sabi nila? Tanggalin mo. You need to remove her as the queen. You need to change her as the queen. 
Amen. Do this anger and this infuriate the king, mga kapatid. So what did the what did the king uh, do? They removed Vashti as the queen. And eventually, mga kapatid, they hold a beauty pageant. Wow, look at this king. Very superficial. No? They hold a beauty pageant who will replace the queen. And here comes Esther, a young Jewish beautiful woman, the Bible says, mga kapatid. Amen? And guess what? Esther won the beauty pageant. Amen. Beauty pageant po ito, hindi po ito yung envelope na ano, popularity. Ha? This is a battle of uh, beauty and brains. Amen. This is the battle of beauty and brains. Hallelujah, Lord. And dito mga kapatid, but the thing is, Esther is very secretive about her Jewish lineage. No? Sikreto. Sikreto yung pagiging Jewish niya. Because as you know, Jewish that time, mga kapatid, they are considered as mababa. They were scattered. They were in exile. So makikita mga kapatid na Esther was secretly living within the provinces of Persia na sikreto, mga kapatid, that she is a Jewish. Amen? And what happened, mga kapatid, is King Xerxes, the favor of King Xerxes. King Xerxes was very obsessed sa kagandahan ni Esther. So at once, ginawa niyang Esther became the queen instantly. Amen, church? Amen? And as we continue, no, after a while, Esther's uncle Mordecai happened to overheard some people who are plotting. Some people who are planning to kill the king. So Mordecai came to Esther to tell the, the plot against the life of the king. And Esther came to the king and told the plot. And they investigated, mga kapatid. So the king was very thankful for Mordecai. Amen. Hallelujah. Now here comes Haman, the king's advisor. Haman, my dear brothers and sisters, Siguro si Heyman, you consider him yung, yung deputy manager na pasipsip gustong maging manager. Yung uh, assistant matron na pasipsip gustong maging matron. Ano pang example na pwede niyong gamitin? Amen. Pasipsip po, no? So we can see, my dear brothers and sisters, that Heyman became the highest of the king's advisor. Siya po yung naging pinakamataas. Remember how Pharaoh turned Joseph to be a governor and to be a ruler of the kingdom? The same with Haman. Ganon din po yung ginawa ni King Xerxes kay Haman. And he even decreed all the land that people will bow down to Haman. So dito makikita natin that Haman became a lesser king. Because people bow down to Haman. And we know, my dear brothers and sisters, that being Jewish, remember Daniel and his three friends in Daniel chapter 6, when they said that during this time, when you hear this sound, all people will bow down to the king. They did not bow down. Because the Lord mandate all his people not to bow down to anyone except to him. You shall not bow down any other except me, thus saith the Lord. Di po ba? Amen. So being a Jewish, having received this command from the Lord, Ten Commandments, Mordecai never bowed down to Haman. Nagkakasulubong sila and he did not bow down to Haman. Because Mordecai said, I only bow down to the Lord. So understandably, this infuriate Haman as well. Galit na galit siya. And he connived. He came to the king. He twist event. Nag-invento siya. The point that he was able, mga kapatid, to make the king agree. 
to kill all the Jew because Haman found out that Mordecai is a Jew. Amen? Hallelujah. So mga kapatid, dito nakikita natin, the focus now is all the life of the Jewish people, all the life of the Jewish nation is now in danger. Kasi may utos na galing kay sa king from the deception of Haman that all the Jews will be put to death. It's as if Holocaust, pre-Holocaust, ano, kapatid. So the focus now turns to Mordecai. Sabi nga ni Sister Grace kanina, during the time, during the situation that is so dire, yung mga, pag, yung mga sitwasyon na hindi mo na alam kung ano yung gagawin mo. It was only left for Mordecai and Haman to do something. It was only left for them the hope, the salvation of the Jewish nation, the revival of the Jewish people, mga kapatid. So what happened? Mordecai came to Esther and he persuaded Esther to go to the king. Esther, you go to the king. Reveal your identity to the king. Aminin mo na isa kang Jewish. Aminin mo na isa kang Hudyo. Reveal your identity, identity to the king. And ask the king to reverse the decree. But my dear brothers and sisters, the problem is, in the law of the Persian, coming to the king without being asked, appearing to the presence of the king without being asked, is an act worthy of death. Amen. Hindi ka pwedeng mag-turn up na lang, considering that you are the queen, but because remember, that king, apart from his queen, he's probably hundreds of concubines. That's the reality. And you cannot just turn up to the king and say, Oh, king! So this is the dilemma of Esther. The dilemma of Esther is, it is against the law to come to the king without being called, without being invited, without being summoned. I will surely put to death. But the highlight of the story is, if we look at the Bible in uh, Esther chapter 4, verse 4, and I want us to pay attention because Mordecai said, Esther, if you remain silent, if you are not going to do anything, your people will perish. And who knows that you have come to your royal throne. Perhaps you became the queen for such a time as this. Amen. 4.14 Esther, body of Christ, wives, women, if you remain silent, if you remain not to do anything, your people perish. Faith perishes. Who knows that you have been called forth for that purpose and reason, mga kapatid. Amen. Women's, not just the women's, to all of us. What is our purpose? Who knows? Yet, you might be a nurse. Yet, you might be a healthcare professional. Yes, we are, majority of us are working in the healthcare industry and whatever, any other jobs that you are, um, uh, that you have. Yes, the Lord brought you to this country or if you are tuning in online, whichever country that you are in. Yes, the Lord brought you to those workplaces that you are working. Hospital, nursing home, the bank, the bus company, the taxi company, the Uber company that you are working. Who knows that the reason that the Lord put you there is to minister to those people. Matthew 5 says that to be the salt and light to those people. Amen, church. 
You have a gra greater purpose. You have a greater calling. More than just making the bank account fatter and fatter. You have purposes, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen? Yes, you might be a part of the ministry. Yes, as a mother, you are a husband to your wife. You are a mother to your children, mga kapatid. But your purpose is more than that. Your purpose is to more than to provide. Your purpose is more than to better the situation of your family. Your purpose is more than to secure a greener pasture. Your purpose, my dear brothers and sisters, look at these children. Look at these children who ministered here in the front earlier. Our purpose, my dear brothers and sisters, is to be a kingdom builders. Our purpose, my dear brothers and sisters, to raise up for your children a future ministers for the Lord. Amen? Who knows, Mordecai said, that you became a mom. You met Mr. So-and-so. Who knows that you met Mrs. So-and-so. That you have children A and children B. For this purpose. That you may raise up a future ministers and worshipers. That you will raise up a future kingdom builders. Amen, church. Amen. Hallelujah. Esther said, surely not because coming to the king without being summoned, without being called is an act worthy of death. But in verse 15, it says in here, then Esther replied to Mordecai. Pay attention. It's a very powerful Go gather together all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my attendants will fast as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king. Even though it is against the law, and if I perish, I perish. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We were talking last Friday about fasting. And here there's an example, my dear brothers and sisters, of a three days absolute fast. No food nor no water. Hallelujah. Amen, church. Wow. I can see people being encouraged to fast. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Mga kapatid, Esther did not only respond with bravery in purpose to go to the king, but with deep and undivided commitment. If I perish, I perish. Amen. If I perish, I perish. Wow. But the most important, my dear brothers and sisters, is she did not rely on her own resources. She did not rely on her own capability. She did not rely on who she is. Knowing that King Circes is so obsessed with her, she did not rely on that favor of the king. But she relied on the favor of the greater king. Who is no other than God? Who is no other than our Lord? Amen, church. He relied on the favor of the greater king. He relied on the favor of the name that is above every name. Amen, church. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Who do we rely on to if we are facing that mountainous problem? 
Who do we rely on to if we encounter problems and issues? The saints, San Miguel. Trevor doesn't know what San Miguel is. <laughs> Who do we rely on to? The bank, the loan shark companies, the overtime. Who do we rely on to, mga kapatid? Hallelujah. Esther relied on God. And he said, fast and pray for me. And if I perish, I perish. Amen. Yes, I might be brilliant. Yes, I might be gifted. Yes, I might be skilled and talented. I might be easily able to do this and do that. But Esther said, I need your prayer. I need your backing. I need your covering. Amen, church. Whether that is leading the praise and worship, whether that is leading the Bible study, whether that is exhorting the giving, whether that is exhorting the offering, whether that is praying for our children, whether that is a job interview, whether that is a healing whether that is a deliverance, whatever issues and concerns, my dear brothers and sisters. Let us come to the Lord. Let us ask the Lord's backing. Let us ask the Lord's covering. Let us ask the Lord in prayer. Amen, church. And as a church, as a family, we are here. To pray with you and to pray for you. We are ready to pray in intercede with you. Amen. Mordecai and Esther could have silently negotiated those things. But they involved the whole nation. They said, tell all the Jews to pray and fast with me. Amen, church. And if you are a Jew in this room. And someone asks, let's pray in fast. Mga kapatid, the answer is yes. I believe that all the Jews in this land prayed in fasted. Amen, church. When God decided to destroy the land of Sodom and Gomorrah, Abraham interceded. But Father God, Lord, what if there are 50 believers in that town? Will you spare it for their sake? Yes, they bargained 50, 45, 40, 30, 35, 20, 10. But sadly, the Lord went on anyway because no one was interceding. Amen, church. How many times that we say amen, that we agreed in prayer? That we exhorted prayer and we agreed, but between you and the Lord, you are sleeping. Amen. Wag po sanang ganun. Amen po. So my dear brothers and sisters, no, to cut the story short, the pivotal of the story is the king looked at Esther with favor. He honored Mordecai while he ordered the execution of Haman. And the Jewish people got saved. The Jewish people got revived. Amen, church. Amen. If you are familiar with the Jewish holidays, if you are familiar with Jewish holidays, this is what they are celebrating during Purim. They were celebrating Purim last week. Yeah? This is what they're celebrating when they're celebrating Purim. And you remember, Purim, meron sila yung triangle na biscuit na kinakain. It's called Osne Haman, Tainga ni Haman. That, uh, the ear of deceiving Haman, sabi nila dun, no? So that's what they are celebrating. So my dear brothers and sisters, the encouragement really to us here is, what is the difference between 
Queen Vashti and Queen Esther. The difference was that Esther was focused on the agenda of the king. Amen. Esther was focused on the agenda of the king. While Vashti, on the other hand, was focused on her own agenda. Vashti was using royalty to enrich herself, to enthrone herself. And when the king sent for her, she forgot that she was only a queen because she is married to a king. She forgot that she is only a queen because she married this king, mga kapatid. How many of us in here forget that we are only saved because of the grace, because of the mercy of our King, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, it says in there, For it is by grace that we have been saved. Amen. Not by works, so that no one can boast. Amen, mga kapatid. This is a free gift of God. Yet, when we are being called by the Lord, yet when we are being summoned by the King, we decline Him. We deny Him. Vashti, we rebuke the spirit of Vashti in our life. Amen, church. O king, do not send for me because I have my own kingdom. I am my own king. Yeah, ganun tayo. Lord, don't call for me. I am busy. Don't call for me. I have more important thing to do. Hallelujah. Don't call for me. I can rely on my own understanding. Esther, Queen Esther, was almost making the same mistake. Queen Esther was almost making the same mistake. But Mordecai said, Madam, don't forget that you were saved because of the grace and mercy of the Lord. Mordecai said, Madam, don't forget that before you sat down on the throne, somebody else was sat in there and was taken out because of this disobedience. And now you are about to commit the same mistake. That's what Mordecai said. If you could really want to continue reigning as a queen and to protect your people, Focus on the king's agenda. Focus on the king's agenda. Submit to the king. Amen. Mga kapatid, my dear brothers and sisters, we rebuke the spirit of Vashti. Some words of truth, mga kapatid. Some words of truth. Pakinggan po natin. When we miss church, when we do not come to church, I'm sorry to say, nobody's affected except you. When you miss church, when you don't come to the church, nobody's affected except you. We will look for you, you we will miss you. But who is missing out in the kingdom? It is you. Sa mga ministers who receive a calling, when we withdraw as a worker, when we step back in the ministry, wag na natin gamitin yung word na pahinga muna ako. Because sadly, God can replace you. Amen? When you deliberately refuse to support the church project and neglect your commitment, Mga kapatid, to be honest, God can put up more committed and determined people in your stead. When you withhold your tithes and offering, God can raise more serious givers. 
when you begin to fight against the church, God sees that as an enmity. Because do not forget, the church is the bride of Christ. Mga kapatid, when you leave the church, guess what? Iiyak ang maiiwan. Maghihinagpis ang maiiwan. But the reality is, more serious people will come in. So we rebuke the spirit of Vashti in our midst, mga kapatid. Amen. Let us focus in the agenda of the king. Amen, church. The second difference of Vashti and Esther is, Esther has her uncle Mordecai, who reminds her, who shepherds her, Otherwise, Vashti have none. And I bless and thank the lives of all the shepherds, of all the uncles, if you want to call them uncles, of all the lives of the pastors that tirelessly shepherds and remind their flock in spite of the contempt that they repetitively being subject to. The bride of Christ pay attention The secret to remain seated is we do not make the same mistake that Vashti made. Amen. Whatever place that we have, whatever ministry that we have, mga kapatid, whatever calling that we receive from the Lord, let's value it. Amen. Let's value it. Whether you are the pastor or the church or whether you are the welcomer or the church, When you stand in the presence of the Lord, you will receive the same welcoming shoulders. Amen, church? Let us have that joy in serving the Lord. Let us have that, let us be proud that we are serving the Lord. Amen po. Amen? Let us not wake up one day that the crown is not in our head. Amen, church? Remember, there are seven crowns at stake in here. When we believe in the Lord, may pitong crowns that the Lord is willing to give us. Do not wake up one day na wala tayong crown, mga kapatid. Amen? Hallelujah! Praise you, Jesus. The secret there is obedience in consecrated worship to the King that brings down the king's attention and gave favor to Esther. It lifted Mordecai and it revived the Jewish nation. Amen. There is power when you forget yourself and you focus on him. Amen, church. There is power when you forget yourself and focus on him. Psalms 37.4 says, Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Amen. Hallelujah. Sometimes we try to work hard for the desire of our heart and it seems that nothing is happening. Now the secret is revealed to us. First and foremost, let us delight ourselves in the Lord. Amen, church. Matthew 10.39 Whoever loses their life in the Lord will find it. If I perish, I perish as long as I am attending the business of the Lord. Amen. And the Lord says that if you lose your life through me, you will certainly find it. Amen, church. John 15, 7. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Amen, church. You know, when Vashti came to the king, the king looked at Vashti with favor. You know what the king said? Vashti, what do you want? If you want half of the kingdom, I will give it to you. I know in Esther, not Vashti. Oh dear, Queen Esther, what is it that you want? 
you want to ask the half of the kingdom, I will give it to you. Wow. But you know what Esther said? O king, my only wish is, can you come to the banquet that I have prepared for you? Hallelujah! Amen, church! Queen Vasti was busy preparing banquet for all these dignitaries, for all these special people. Queen Vasti prepared a banquet for these famous people. But she forgot to invite the most important person. Amen. Whereas Esther, she prepared a banquet for her, herself. She did not invite anyone except him who is most important. Amen, church. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord says, if you make me your priority, everything will fall in their places for you. Amen, church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Can I invite, let's invite the music team, mga kapatid. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Can I invite? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't really know what are you going through right now. I don't really know. Who do you mirror right now? Maybe most of us, most of you, is likened to Queen Esther. Or maybe most of us, some of us, is likened to Queen Vashti. The women's, the mothers, bride of Christ, let us stand up and let us tell the Lord that Lord, I'm sorry if I hosted a banquet and invited everyone except you. Now, I learned from Vasti. And I want to prioritize you. I want to prioritize your plans. I want to worship you. I want to honor you. I want to make sure that from today, I am able to give you the worship and honor that you deserve. Can we talk to the Lord Church? Let us not just allow this servant to let in usher us, but can we connect to the Lord? Can we talk to the Lord and said that you're all I want. You're all I want, Lord. You're all I want, oh Jesus. Sige po, let's talk to the Lord.
Let's talk to the Lord, church. It's more than a song. Esther, talk to the Lord. the Lord Church. focus on these two prayer points. First, I want us to pray for Vashti. If there is a Vashti standing here in this room today, let us pray for you. If you are Vashti standing in this room today, if you are joining us online, and if you are in that moment of Vashti, I want us to pray that, Lord, restore my hunger. Lord, restore my love for you. Restore me, O God. In Esther chapter 2, verse 1, it says in there, 
that later on, when King Sirs' fury have subsided, he remembered Vashti and what she had done and what he had decreed about her. Vashti, if you ever step back, Vashti, if you have ever given up your commitment to the Lord, Vashti, if you have ever put down your guard to the Lord, the Lord remembers you. And the Lord is calling you. And the Lord is extending His hands upon you. Lord, this is who I was before. This is how you have used me before. Mothers, wives, spiritual moms, women, aunties, sisters, you were called by the Lord to be the salt and light for your families. To be the salt and light for the kingdom of God. You were led in this church and family to be the church, to be the salt and light. Lord, when I was a teenager, I walked with you. When I was a young adult, I worked with you. Some time ago, not long ago, I committed my life to your works. But I don't know what has distracted me out. I don't know why am I in this slumber state at the moment. I don't know why am I distant from you. Remember me, O God. Remember me, O King. Restore me back, O King, in the name of Jesus Christ. Restore my hunger. Restore my love for you. Restore me, I pray. Someone is praying. Restore me. Remember me. Rest on me. You're all I want. You're all I ever needed. Come on, someone is praying. Pray, Vashti. Pray. Tell the Lord that, Lord, I recognize that you're all that I want. Lord, I recognize now that you're all that I want. I recognize now that only you can satisfy me. I have tried both worlds. The sinful world in the world in you and I have now realized and recognized that you are all that I want. I have now realized and recognized that I am blessed to be in your presence. Restore me, O oh God. Restore me, Lord. Restore relationship, Father. The life of our brothers and sisters that have relationship, Father, that is being trialed and tested. Lord, restore them right now in Jesus' name. Even in our brothers and sisters who have stepped away from the church, Lord, restore them back right now. Wherever they may be, those mothers, Lord, use them as the instrument to come to you. Someone is praying, come on. Lord, restore us. Restore your church. Restore your people right now. 
The second prayer point that I want us to focus on is Esther. Father in my life, in my home, in my church, may your presence be manifested to drive away everything that does not reflect Jesus, to drive away every trouble, to drive away every scheme, to drive away every works and wiles in the scheme of the enemy, to drive away whatever problem, to drive away whatever sickness, to drive away whatever illness, to drive away whatever challenges, Father God. Lord, drive away the scheme of the enemy. Just as Haman schemed to annihilate your people, Lord, I pray, drive away every scheme that will try to steal, to kill and to destroy my faith, my family's faith, in relationship with you. I invite you to come into my life, Lord. I invite you to come to my banquet, O King. I invite you to come in my home. Come in my church. Drive away the darkness. Drive away the misfortune. Everything that is not Christ must go away. John 1, 4 says, The light which is Jesus shines in the darkness. Amen, church. Let those darkness in us disappear through the life of Jesus, through the light of Jesus. Someone is praying, you're all I want. You're all I want. brothers and sisters, church, let us surrender our life to the Lord. Let us offer our life in the hands of God. Your very life that you have right now, whatever mansion that you have, whatever financial capability that you have, whatever resources that you have, you know what? It is a not new. We know that those are nothing. If there is something that we truly have, that is the life that we have. And I encourage each and every one of us to surrender our life in the hands of God. Kung hindi, if we are not yet sure, if we are yet to surrender our life to the Lord, let it be today. Mother, women's, let it be that when you remember this day, Mothering Sunday, March 27, 2020, this is the time that I receive a rebirth from the Lord. This was the time, this was the moment that I cross over death through life. This was the moment that my faith was secured in the Lord. Not just the women's, all of us. Mga kapatid, your life that is so precious, if you try to look after that, if you try to nurture that and keep that away, you will not be capable. The word of the Lord says, 
If ever you pass that life in my hand, you will find it. Amen, church. So for a few moments, let's have a minute. Let's talk to the Lord and say, Lord, I guess this is it really. Lord, I guess this is no hiding anymore. According to the words that you have given your servant earlier, as we come to the light, as we come near you, we are exposed. We are so exposed that we cannot hold back anymore. We are so exposed that we cannot deny it anymore. We are so exposed in your light, Father, that we cannot even lie anymore. Father, I failed you, and I failed you miserably. Considering that I am being used by you, considering that I am a member of your body, and yet, I fail you miserably. And yet, I am not able to give the portion that you deserve. Lord, I want to come to you with all humbleness and humility and submission and say that, Lord, I am nothing and I want to pass on my life in your hand. Sige po mga kapatid, let's talk to the Lord. It's as simple as, Father, I repent. Father, forgive me of all my iniquities and shortcomings. Father, forgive me of anything in me that is not pleasing in you. Lord, I recommit my life unto you. I rededicate my service unto you. Lord, I want to be revived. I want to be revived, Lord. I am dead, but I want to be revived, Father God. I want to be revived, Lord. And thank you so much because you are giving me this opportunity to do it right here, right now. Because after today, I'm not really in control. If there is a moment that I am in control, this is the moment. And I choose, O oh God, to surrender unto you. I choose, Lord, to submit my life unto you. Come on, church. Brothers and sisters, submit our life to the Lord. If you believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, confess in your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart that God has raised Him up from the dead. Entrust and surrender your life to Jesus then you know that you have a king that will look at you with favor. Amen, church. Hallelujah! Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Father God, for the redemption. Thank you, Father, for the forgiveness. Thank you, Father God, for accepting my life as I entrust it unto you. Thank you, Lord, that I have a king that will only look at me with favor. That I have a king that will provide for my welfare in the spirit and body and soul. Thank you, Lord, that I do not have to travail and struggle now, Lord. All I will do is stand firm in you and trust in the complete and perfect finished work of your son Jesus in the cross. Amen! Amen. Hallelujah! Let's give the Lord the best, 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 best club offering. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your work. Thank you, Lord, for your ministry. Thank you, Lord, we enthrone you. Once again, church, can we give the Lord the best club offering in honor of Him? Hallelujah, Lord.